Hey everyone, this is Rachel, and today I'm here with a new scrapbooking process video. Thanks so much for joining me here, and I hope you enjoy. If you could flick me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome, and I would love it if you would become a subscriber. You can also click on the notification bell so you always know when I have a new video up. All right, folks, let's get going. Hey everyone, and welcome to the February episode of For the Love of Crafting and Sharing, a YouTube collaboration that is a bunch of different YouTubers, and every month we're doing a slightly different challenge. Last month it was just kind of showing you our style. This month we are scrap lifting. So we are a bunch of different YouTubers with all different styles and all different ways of scrapbooking, and this month we are showing our love for all all of the other crafters on YouTube, on the social medias and all of that, whether you are a Pinterest person or Instagram, no matter where you get your inspiration from online, we were told just find someone and uh, share the love. So for me, it was super simple because I fell in love with a layout last month from one of my fellow crafters and sharers, Scrapbook Quebec. Uh, did this really amazing graphic, uh, very nature themed layout from Iceland. And I fell in love with it, which is hilarious because I am not a graphic scrapbooker. I love the look. I think it's gorgeous. I'm a huge, huge fan of Kathy Zilski, who for me is the queen of graphic designs. And I just don't scrapbook that way. <laughs> so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm totally going to scrap lift this layout for February. And it's probably going to look nothing like the actual original. And that's the really cool thing about scrap lifting. You can take an original idea or, um, the way something looks on a big picture scale, but by bringing your own style and your own, um, identity into it, sometimes it really doesn't even end up looking like the original layout at all. So I'm going to go ahead and get you guys put on fast forward. Two things first. Number one, if you could flick me a thumbs up, that would be super awesome. Number two, please don't forget to go into the description box below and check out all the other ladies who are participating in the For the Love of Crafting and Sharing YouTube collaboration. All right, everyone, let's get going. I just wanted to mention I'm going to be working with Chamel's box of crayons. Now I don't have a lot of paper left, but what I do have left is quite usable for this layout. So I go ahead and grab a piece of white cardstock and because of my pattern paper, I really want to use those rainbows rather than the vertical strips of pattern paper that Scrapping Quebec had in her layout, I'm going to flip her layout and have those pieces of paper run horizontally. So I originally thought to, I was going to use that lime green paper with the dashes on it as my thin strip of paper, but I actually really love all of the branding strips that I've saved. Um, I've used other branding strips from this line in other layouts, but the I think it's four I have left, the multicolor polka dot, the love, 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 the tiny red and white polka dot, and then the one with iguanas on it. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to go ahead and use those. So this is, <laughs> I have no idea what I was so excited about in that particular moment, not even the slightest, but there you go. Um, <laughs> so I've got the ones with the diagonal paint brushes uh, of different sizes. And then what I'm going to do is trim down the white cardstock and then border my entire layout with this red cardstock. Now, Scrapping Quebec had done this as well. She just used black, and that's what gave her that very graphic, clean look versus what I'm doing, which is a lot more high energy just because of our photo choices and the stories we're going to tell. So just because you are scrap lifting someone doesn't mean you have to do a similar theme to them. You can scrap lift someone and look 
have the end look be completely different and only the fact that I'm going to be using four photos uh, slightly piled on each other is really going to be what comes through with the scrap lift. Now I start to tape my white cardstock down and this is a trick my pal Kelly O. Black does where you tape down one side then you get it down nicely and then you tape down the other sides and it works almost all the time except when you realize you have not cut your paper even sided so I had to go back and take a couple more um, millimeters off of one side of the piece of paper because I did not measure I don't normally measure so I was like oh sure I actually do need to measure for this so I end up with even redness around the entire layout so what I'm going to do now is trim down my pattern paper because I just want it to run to the edges of the white. I want that full red border on it. And this particular branding strip was cut with just a little bit of the pattern paper left on it. So I tried to trim it down as evenly as I could. I wasn't super successful in that, but there you go. I had a little break in my ATG, so I cut out to fix that. And now I'm going to border all four of my photos on the leftovers of the red cardstock I bordered the entire layout with. It's a similar thing to what Scrapping Quebec did in hers. Obviously, you're going to get a different energy with using red paper than you do with what she did, which was using black. While I'm doing all of this, I do want to say a lot of people feel that or have expressed personally on Facebook pages and in scrapbooking um, forums and stuff like that, that they don't want a scrap list because they consider it quote unquote cheating. It is absolutely not cheating. It is just another way to get inspiration. Now, I would not necessarily submit a scrap lifted layout for publication or for a design team application or anything like that where you were claiming it was your own design. But other than that, you should absolutely feel free to scrap lift an entire layout, scrap lift an area of a layout, scrap lift a um, pattern paper design or a photo design, anything like that. Because What's really important is being able to be creative. And if using scrap lists or using sketches is what makes you feel the most creative, that's what you should do. So I've got my papers pretty much where I'm going, uh, where I'm going to have them. <laughs> I'm not finishing my sentences here. I apologize. And then what I did with the photos was I just kind of zhuzhed them around till they were in a pattern where I liked them. I use my T-square ruler just to make sure that that first branding strip is straight on my pattern paper. I'm just kind of using that as a lip because I actually didn't want as much of the paint brushes visible as I originally cut it to. Rather than going ahead and recutting it, I just placed the branding strips over the paper. It worked out the same. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm losing my mind here. So I go ahead and trim off the rest of the branding strips so they match the length of the other pattern papers. And then I'm going to make a dumbish mistake. I'm going to flip my paper over and I'm going to put ATG on the wrong side of the page. I'm going to put it on the side that is up. So I have to roll back my ATG tape with my thumb. Thankfully that's not that hard to do. I just cut away because it took a little bit of time. So I'm finally getting my papers to where I like them, where they're going to be, and I am very happy with how this looks. It's very cute, in my opinion. So I go back and I grab my photos, and I'm going to go ahead and get those put down as well. And like I said, it's not necessarily exactly how Scrapping Quebec had hers, but it has that same feel. I'm also pulling in this triangle piece of dark blue paper, this is just, I had used that paper for a uh, background cut file and I had this triangle left over. So I was just like, oh, that makes a really cute big photo corner. <laughs> and now it's time to start embellishing. Now here's where I really veer off of what my the original layout 
has. Because I'm doing a different type of layout, she was doing nature photography, I'm scrapbooking two children. It really, in the embellishing, is where your differences of layouts come into play. So I'm using, obviously, bright colors, but I'm using a lot of crayon-themed things. I'm adding washi tape with scissors on them. I couldn't think of the word scissors. That's crazy. So the idea behind this layout is this is my nephew and a really good friend of his. Now they've kind of grown up together. Uh, my nephew is now a freshman in college. Uh, the other child is a senior in high school. So it was really, um, you know, just this is a longtime friend. They used to live next door to each other. So at this time period, when you're looking at kids this age, they spend a lot of time coloring and, you know, primary colors, you know, they're wearing red and blue and rainbow and all of that so I really just wanted a nice colorful layout to kind of convey this time of their life spent playing together and stuff like that. So I'm pulling out stickers from the sticker book and those require extra adhesive. If you ever have any of the American Crafts sticker books that are a mix of clear and cardstock and sometimes washi and alphas, they definitely require extra adhesive. The stickers from that 6x12 sheet, they do not. I also pull out from the box of crayons word thickers, the word play, and then I go into my stash and I pull out these, oh sugar, I think they're simple stories, but I'm not 100% on that, um, but they came as a kit of six different colors. I think it was red, green, blue, pink, black, and cream, or black and white. I'm not 100% sure on that either. Um, and I pull out a pink, a green, a blue, and then I had planned on using the red, but it didn't have the right letter. And I didn't feel like going back and pulling the rest of them up, so we just went back to green, and it's totally fine. So my title is going to be Play Pals, which I thought was really cute. A play on play pen pals. That's what I'm, I'm like, wait, no, that's the wrong word. <laughs> All right, so I go ahead and add two more of those crayons to the bottom down there, and I'm actually coming to the end. I'm just going to be adding a few little bits and bobs, uh, the stars from the sheet, the stars from the thickers sheet as well, and then I go back and I add a couple of toucans, which if you're thinking of a toucan as a bird, which you know obviously it is, and the iguanas, um, but I'm thinking more playful, colorful, and then also a play off of the word toucan, um, meaning two, like the number two, two can play, two can have fun, something like that. That's what was kind of running through my head. And I know it seems random and weird, but it just has to make sense to you. And that's a lot of my ability to use odd embellishments is my ability to think not necessarily literally, but figuratively, what do they mean to you? Um, whether it be that a sheep is soft and this is a soft layout, or a unicorn is, you know, imaginative and you're doing an imaginative layout or a layout about imagination or something like that. Oh, so I'm pointing out that I could not at that point in time find my slick writer, so I am going to do my journaling later. I have since found it, so I will go ahead and do that journaling. Uh, one thing I'm going to add, one last thing I'm going to add are some enamel dots, and I recently reorganized my enamel dots to be uh, by color on little index cards. So I'm going to use some red ones, some yellow ones, and some navy blue ones. And that will finish off my layout here. Make sure you go into the description box below, check out all the other people doing uh, the For the Love of Crafting and Sharing. Make sure you give them some love with some likes and some comments. If you'd like to give me some love with some likes and some comments, I would very much enjoy that. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day, night, or morning, whatever it happens to be when you're watching this. Bye.